What's up socials, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do a quick video about, what else? iPhone apps, because they are the saving grace to our world. It's going a little far, probably. Forgive the construction, we're inevitably going to have in this video. You know how like the backup thing is always on? I'm always like, when are you gonna back up into something? The reason I thought this video would be useful is because I think that there's so much you can do with your smartphone, especially with video. And a lot of people come to me and say like, oh, do I need to buy this crazy camera? Or do I need to buy this? Do I need to buy that? And a lot of time you can get started with just your phone. And there's a lot of apps that also keep you engaged with your community and finding new ways to market your content on the phone. You really could run an entire channel for the most part on your phone. It sounds wild, but it is possible. I don't like to do that because there are things I like to do on desktop computer, but still the principle stands. You could totally just use your phone and have an incredible online presence as a vlogger. It doesn't even have to be on YouTube. It could be somewhere else, but this is absolutely possible. So we're going to talk about apps that I recommend you have on your phone for various reasons. Certainly ones that I find useful. All right, let me record my screen here. QuickTime has not been my friend. Okay. So pretty much all the apps I'm going to talk about are on the uh, front page here because I don't like to go searching on my phone for apps. I, if I can't find something, if I know that it's definitely not on the front screen because I don't want it on the front screen, I usually will swipe to search and that's pretty much how I do things. I've heard that that actually uses quite a bit of battery life, but my battery has been fine actually. This phone is pretty new, but um, it's still been okay. So the first app I want to talk about is, hmm, what do you think? YouTube, obviously. I like to just have this front and center because I want to see my channel. I want to see what it looks like for people that watch it. I want to just see like how, what, how does everything look? Do I like, you know, what's happening with how YouTube is designing it? You can tell this layout is changing all of the time. One thing I like about mobile but don't love is that everything is really crisp. It's very easy to read everything, but this automated coloring, I'm still indifferent about because you'll notice that the top of my channel here is gray. I didn't pick that. That's based on the cover art from what I can tell and the dominant color that they're pulling from that. Kind of a bummer because I guess it's a darker photo. So they're just like, gray, sure, make her channel gray. Uh, and I'm like, I wasn't really going for gray YouTube, but okay. I can't really do anything about it because I like the way that the photo looks. So that's what I'm stuck with. They haven't done that on desktop yet, which I'm happy about, but I do like to just kind of log into my channel to see if that random color changes for any reason. <laughs> What's your color? Leave that in the comments. I'd love to hear what YouTube has decided your color is. It's probably red for a lot of people, if I had to guess. But yeah, I just like to be in YouTube and just make sure everything's good on the channel. Um, check activity and trending. Obviously, looking at trending is very, very important just to see what craziness YouTube thinks the entire world wants to see. It's really fascinating, but extremely important. So YouTube on the phone is vital, whether you do everything on your smartphone for your videos or not. The second app that I, I really love is Social Blade. And I like this because you can go and search for your channel and get a good idea of how it's doing. C plus I feel like is where I ended up in school. So if that's what Social Blade thinks about my channel, that's about as much as I care about that. But I like to kind of see, you know, on the day to day, what's happening from a subscriber and viewer standpoint, are there any spikes that are happening? And this is just a good place to kind of get a feel for how is the health of the channel. I definitely don't pay attention to the grade. I'm more paying attention to what is the percentage of sub growth? What is the percentage of view growth? That's really important. And I, I think that, knowing that and being able to glance at it, especially when there are those moments where you have a video that does really, really well versus not very, very well and seeing if things are downtrending or uptrending. It's so important to your channel to know that. So I really like Social Blade for that. Um, you can also look up other channels and that's interesting too, just to kind of see where people are and you can kind of look at everything else with your channel here as well. And then of course there is YouTube for creators, which is extremely important and that's Studio. I absolutely love the Studio app. What I like to look at is, you know, where are we growing? Where are we getting referrals from. And so really diving into these analytics and going deeper to see, you know, how is the view duration five minutes? That's really, really good. Um, how can we get 
so good suggested videos youtube channels is recommending the video notifications browse features a lot of these things are typical but if anything is higher than normal that's good to know too because that video might be an opportunity to come up with a second idea to come up with a series idea to come up with you know really who's who's sending me traffic and can i send them some chocolate because i want more of that i mean especially if there's these external sources if somebody embeds your video maybe you need to find out who they are so you can be like wow that's really great thank you for linking to my video these things are so important and what i like about the creator app is that it lets you be super in the know about it on a moment's notice. I think a lot of people are like, yeah, YouTube analytics, I'll get in there sometime. It's a very intimidating space to be in. So on desktop, people usually don't look at it. They're looking at superficial things, mostly just views and watch time. Which are two very important things as well as subscribers, but it's not the only thing. Really looking at how things are happening in the psychology of your viewer and how long are they watching and where is the moment where you really need to get them to do something else. You know, that's super important to know and these analytics absolutely show that to you. QuickTime has stopped recording, which is just shocking. The next app I wanna show you is HiRise and you probably haven't thought about it because if you don't think about contact management in terms of the people you know and keeping those relationships fresh, then you likely have never looked at something like HiRise because you probably haven't looked at a lot of contact management apps. So this might be new territory for you, but this app is vitally important to me because when I meet people like you or another vlogger or a contact that might send me business or somebody that wants to know more information about my book or more information about my speaking, I have to keep very diligent details about those people in a database so that I know how to follow up with them and keep things going from a conversation standpoint of what kinds of business or sponsorship or just like partnership of any kind that we can make happen. So I can't show you any of my contacts because then I would have to kill you. But honestly, I just don't want you to see my notes that I've taken because sometimes it's a little embarrassing that I don't remember certain things about people. So I'm not gonna show you that private information, but as you can tell, you know, you fill this thing out very simply in terms of who the people are and just the basic information that you need to know about them. I really like this Twitter and LinkedIn field because it starts pulling in that social information about them, their headshot and things like that. And then when you actually have a person in your database, you can go log information about them. Say you went out to lunch, you might wanna notate some things that you learned about that person then, or maybe you wanna follow up with a task, you know an anniversary is coming up, so you wanna send something to them. That's what I really like High Rise for. It's very good at reminding me about those tasks, how I follow up with people. And I keep this here on my phone because I don't need all those phone numbers in my main contacts on my iPhone, but definitely useful in High Rise. It's a perfect fit. And then it's right there on my phone. Anyway, I can just copy paste if I need to call somebody or text them. But High Rise has way more people in it than my actual contacts on my phone because that's really more of a place for me, mostly for either clients that work with me very closely, but mostly just friends and family. You gotta have those boundaries in your life. The next app I wanna show you is Focus at Will. I really love this. It's a great desktop app as well as mobile app. You do have to pay for it after a trial in order to keep it up, but I like it because it has been my go-to, and I've talked about a few of these in the past, but it's been my go-to app for listening to something that keeps you focused for a set amount of time. So if you're familiar with the Pomodoro technique, this is essentially 25 straight minutes of focus and you get a five minute break. And then for every three or four Pomodoros, you take a longer break. And that kind of gets you through the day for the highest level of productivity. I take that technique and use focus at will for that. So essentially you can choose all of these different sort of sounds that are happening and um, whatever you kind of like best and the level of intensity and yada, yada, yada. And then you can set the amount of time that you want that for. So let's say we're gonna go with Pomodoro technique. We're gonna say 25 minutes set. And so you'll hear like a little chime once you set it and then it'll start to play whatever it is you chose, classical music, medium intensity for 25 minutes. And when you hear the chime again and the music stops, that's when you know that it's time for a break. I really like this when I'm sort of sitting down and doing research and planning out my editorial calendar and coming up with new ideas and making sure that I don't veer away to Twitter or check uh, my Facebook groups or go into email. I really try to use this app when I'm trying to get something very focused done. It's been very useful for me trying to get my presentation done the last couple of weeks. And so you're probably not gonna use this when you're filming or when you're editing, but there are other times when you're 
preparing the vlog or doing something in post that you need to stay focused because it overwhelms you and you're like, oh, I'm never going to get it done. I'm never going to get it done. Set the timer and challenge yourself. Even if the timer is only five minutes, just get five minutes of focused work done and see what happens. Once you start, you might actually stick with it. I've always had a lot of trouble choosing task management applications, but this one has been the one that I prefer because it's extremely simplistic and I don't use task manager apps for pretty much everything. As you can see at the top of my phone, I have Trello. That's where I communicate with my executive assistant about tasks that need to get done between the two of us. And then I actually bullet journal for the things that I actually have to get done because I'm much better off writing something down. But when I come up with a video idea, I need a place to put it. If I'm in the grocery store or like shopping or not in the office or walking Lucy and I don't have my bullet journal and I'm just like oh I have an idea I need to write it down this is what I use because I just think it's so easy to look at and simple so if you go into any do which is just a task manager you can choose any one you want I have one pocket of these like to-do lists that are for video ideas so how I bullet journal making money vlogging. I just did that one so we can mark that one off. My Instagram routine. These are not all my video ideas. This is where they go before I go and write them down in a more robust list in my bullet journal. And I also keep a bigger list in Evernote as well. Obviously, that's not the only thing that I use this for. But like I said, this is sort of like a holding place for tasks before they're either on my calendar or in a place where I'm actually going to keep track of them. But you can have lots of different folders here. And I just like it because it's simple. It's very simple. Some of these task manager apps, they just get so big and crazy looking. I'm like, oh my God, I don't even know what to look at. My tasks are all the features that I can add to the fact that I have tasks to do. And that sucks. I don't like that. I just want to do a quick synopsis of my Instagram folder because I think this is another video that we could do later. As you saw, I did have the idea for a my Instagram routine video. I wonder what you guys think about that because it continues to change year over year. But these are the apps that I kind of hang on to just in case. Oh, I hate when that's out of place. No, 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 no. We'll put you here. Not that I use that lately. But anyway, the main ones that I use are on this front page. And so Visco, Darkroom, Snapseed, Facetune, Planoly, Bitly, Focalmark. I don't usually use Microsoft Selfie because I don't like editing the face that much. It's really like there's way too much of that happening on the internet, so it's kind of useless. Also, I pay way too much for skincare to keep photoshopping my face. It's like, why would I buy skincare if I could just photoshop my face? Don't photoshop your face. And Spark Post. Love my Spark Post. So Spark Post I use mostly for Instagram stories if you guys have seen some of those graphics. But these are really, really, really all of them very important apps depending on how you want to customize your feed on Instagram or any other social network to promote your content. This is vitally important. I have a whole strategic plan for Instagram when a YouTube video goes live. So all of these apps are really really important if you're interested in a my instagram routine video let me know in the comments yay battery died Woo! obviously i want to mention instagram and twitter because those are in the priority zone on my phone but i feel like they don't really need a moment with you because you guys clearly know i'm very active on instagram and twitter those are my go-to places to communicate with you outside of these videos so they just get an honorable mention. The last app I want to talk about is Evernote. There are so many places to take notes. There really are. But sometimes you need a hub for things that are searchable. And so the nice thing about digital note taking is that I, if I know I've had a thought before, if I know that I've done something before, I want to be able to search for it. It's part of the reason why I have to keep paying Google for my email that is supposed to be free uh, because I archive everything. I don't delete anything. So um, that's kind of weird, but Evernote is really nice for this. I like to go into Evernote to actually outline what I want to talk about in a video. So like I've said to you guys before, I don't use a teleprompter. I use notes. I just bullet point out what I want to talk about throughout a video and I keep that close by. It's a lot easier to read those notes on my phone than it is to kind of hold my bullet journal. So that's why those notes end up in here. I know I'm all over the place, but I do have methods for the madness. I keep all of my notes in Evernote so that I can pull that up on my phone and just read through it as I'm delivering the information to you.
So you can see here in this folder is called Savvy Sexy Social because guess what? That's the name of this show. And um, so you can see SSS 741 was called Be More Productive, Five Things to Do Every Morning. And so I talk about how that's powered by A. Weber, yada, 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 it's sponsored. Make sure you mention that, make sure you disclose that. And then these are my bullet points just to make sure that I touch on all these things. I by no means read these words. Sometimes I just like to overwrite just in case I sit here and I'm feeling less talkative never happens by the way but um, I have a lot of notes here just to make sure that I cover all the bases that I want to um, so that is what I like to use Evernote for if it's the only thing you use it for you can use your notes app for this as well I use that it's on the front page I like literally I just use it when I feel the need to I don't actually have a reason for the notes app but the Evernote app I totally do I'm just checking to see if this is still recording because it's starting to drive me crazy so that's seven plus apps that you can have have on your seven plus phone or other kind of device if you're a vlogger and are looking for some useful tools I'm really really pumped to be delivering my creative live presentation next Tuesday so July 18th I'm actually gonna be on creativelive.com for the whole day talking about how to vlog like a boss and if you watch it live you can watch it totally for free you do not have to buy it but you can if you want the replay I'll leave that link below but please go watch that because I'm serious about this iPhone vlogging stuff okay I mean it I'm going to be talking that day about how you can actually be a vlogger simply using your phone we're also going to talk about a lot of other more robust gear but we are going to focus on how you can start with the bare minimum and still vlog like a boss so I really hope you'll be there and I'd love your support watching online it means a lot to me they have an incredible community at creative live but I like it when we get to hang out so I really need you there and um, that's the thing. That's the exciting thing that's happening right now. So thank you so much for tuning in. Socials, I appreciate it as always. Make sure you do me a huge favor. Huge, huge, huge favor. The only way that I ask you pay me back in these videos is to subscribe for good vibes. They're, they've got great vibes out there, the way they are just hammering away at this building. And I appreciate you putting up with that and still subscribing to me. It means a great deal. Vin and I are looking for a new place to live and we're just like thick walls. If these apps are helpful for you, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. And don't forget that you are the only one that can do it. You must go after the life you want. Cheers.